What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we are not talking about baggers and we are certainly not talking about beer. share some opinions on the Sportster S. <laughs> not a bike, obviously, not, not a bike either one of us are buying. Right, right. You, not you know. something I even would have known much about before we just started talking about this yesterday. So, but I think it's a significant bike in like Harley's move forward in, in their models, right? Okay. So, uh, to the point where, I mean, honestly, You've seen the technology that's in this bike. Some of it comes from the Pan America. A lot of it. You know, a lot of it comes from the Pan America. And this, obviously, this power plant is the platform they're going to be using to move forward. You know, yeah. everybody's like, I can't wait to see it in a bagger, which, you know, neither here nor there. But it's it's coming, I'm, I'm sure, at some point. Right. You know. Um, interestingly enough, my first bike was a Sportster. Cool. So some people know that, some people didn't. You know, a little uh, orange and black, 2009 uh, 1200C. It's a cool bike. Orange, huh? Yeah, orange and black. Hmm. So I bought that from Chamontan in uh, dealer. No longer open. No longer in existence. Real quick, let's take a look at the Sportster. Um, sharp looking bike. Comes in three colors. All right, the green, yep. which you're not really a fan of, right? You don't like that mineral green too much? No, I'm not a I huge mean, fan of it, but it's not bad. So, but not a lot of tin on this bike. I mean, you're just talking about no, the tank, small front fender, small rear fender. <laughs> if you call right? that a fender. If, I, if, yeah, it's really a seat you cow, really. I, I think I would call that a seat cow. So, I don't mind the green. Obviously, it comes in uh, vivid black, as I think probably almost every Harley in the lineup does, right? Right. right. And it comes in the uh, sand, the white sand pearl. White sand pearl. So, which I Not bad. I like it in that color. And I've never been a fan of white bikes. It's borderline tan. It it is almost like a cream kind yeah. of. Yeah. Especially when you see it in person, it's got you know it, it, it's it's a sharp color. And I think on this bike, with the bronze that's in the engine, I think that color kind of goes nice with it. But yeah, especially with the. Um the Harley logo and, and the whatever that decal scheme they got going on on there. Yeah, so that old, like, that old flat tracker kind of trying to bring back, like, the beginnings of Harley Davidson kind of style. And there's a lot of, like, flat track influence in this bike, right? The exhaust right. Is, is the mid. Um, <laughs> obviously, uh, they went to bar end mirrors, which was always. Bar end mirrors were like always one of those things that a lot of Sportster guys I think did. Um, definitely like a, a little kind of a bobber influence. And here Harley went with them right out of the gate. You know. Yeah, I don't love it. You don't love it? No. Not just just the appearance from the front the front of the bike just looks a little goofy to me, but with with the mirrors way out on the ends? Yeah, yeah. kinda sticking off the mm -hmm. end of the handlebar there, but it's just me, I guess. I guess I like the fact that Harley, instead of just bolting the same mirror that they bolt onto all their bikes, kind of went out and did something different to try and fit the design of this one. Right. You know? So, quick look at the other side of the bike. Bike, relatively clean, except for that big old license, license plate. plate. Man, oh, yeah. oh man. Which is, so, I mean... It's DOT. It's 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 a tough thing for them to have to work around. There's not much to the rear end of the bike. No, you know? no, and it needs to be. It has to be there, especially for the bikes sold in Europe. Europe is much more restrictive about like their plate heights and their plate locations. So okay. they're just gonna make you know make one bike and and out it goes. But other side of the bike, you know, left side looks good. Um, obviously the Revo 1250. Yep. This bike is 121 horsepower, 94 foot-pounds of torque in a 500-pound pound bike. bike. Yeah. So they're calling this thing a Sportster. You know, a Sportster S, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. To me, it, it fits none of what a classic Sportster is. 
Why? I mean, just with well, the power alone. Yeah. You know, okay. j just, from, j just, just from the power alone. And then I think, you know, as we get into some of the other things that are included in this bike are things that like a standard, you know, soft tail or even a standard sportster like would never, would never have from Harley. All right. So a little list here of everything that is uh, some of the key features, right? The four inch round display, this bike has Bluetooth connectivity. So that in itself speaks to kind of the customer base that they're going after. You know, Bluetooth connectivity yeah. in a Sportster never would happen, right? Um, it's got uh, some trash control, the different ride modes. So that technology that came from the Pan America, now they've filtered down, you know, into this bike. Right. Um, Cruise control, man. Yo. Right? That's awesome. To me, you can't go, I mean, any bike should have cruise control. Well, and and most, most of the competition comes with cruise control yeah. no matter what level you're buying, right? So for Harley to, to get cruise control on there. And another thing that people have knocked Harley for consistently, especially with the Indian comparisons, are yeah. the, are the, is the lighting. Yeah. So this bike, bang, all LED lights, done. Yeah. So they're obviously listening, you know, to their customer base and they see what the market's doing and that's why competition is good, you know. Um, yeah, the Choose Your Ride, this is really cool. Sport, road, or rain, um, and this level of bike is, I think, very, very neat. And ABS, trash control, it's got tire pressure monitoring. That's cool. You know, because when we first looked at this bike, you know, you're looking at Sportster prices, and I don't know, I'm kind of used to, I think, what did I pay, like, not $8,000 for my Sportster. I mean, it was 10 years ago. Right. Brand new. But even up until recently, like, Sportsters have been kind of sub-12. Yeah. Right? For sure. So some of the Sportsters we looked at, I think, were like 11, 12 yesterday. I didn't give them a good hard look. Yeah, a lot of them were around 12. And then we walked up to this bike, which is labeled a Sportster, without knowing a whole heck of a lot about it. And uh, holy cow. <clears throat> I think 17, <laughs> 17? Just a hair under 17. Yeah. 16 and change. Uh, 16 and change, yeah. Seems like a lot for a sponsor. <laughs> well, and that's the opinion. But I, I think when you start, like, peeling the layers of the onion back, you know, you're getting, one, you're, one, you're getting a lot of motor. For sure. Which is what sportsters, it's what you everybody know, wants. It's what everybody wants. Everybody wants that. Well, everybody wants one, a, that 190, <laughs> one motor, so... <laughs> This is a heck of a lot of motor for this for a 500 pound bike. I think that's a lot of motor for a 500 pound bike. I think that that bike is probably going to be, you know, probably a hoot to ride. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think one of the things from a comfort standpoint, you know, looking at the bike, I feel like they call them forward controls, and I don't know if it's the design of the frame. They're calling those forward controls. Exactly. I don't think they're forward. They're not forward like my old Sportster 1200C forward, was like forward. Five, eight or below, maybe. Maybe. Right. I think they're kind of like, they're not mids, but they're not forwards. They're, they're like an in-between, right. I feel like. They do sell, you know, some mids for this, and we'll get into that, you know, a little bit later. Big change. I don't, I don't mind it. I'm not a fan. It would probably drive me nuts if I was riding. You're not a fan. I'm not a fan of this, this change. At all. <laughs> at all. I just think it's so, bizarre. What, what we're talking about is the uh, the turn signals. They've taken the turn signals and they put both turn signals on the left. So you've got a little thumb switch for your right and your left turn signals. Listen, it's a metric thing. <laughs> I, it, I, don't, I, I don't know what to say. I, I just... I, it's not my thing. It's weird that the parts, the things that they're picking and choosing to try to be more metric on. But here's here's the thing: we don't ride with a lot of guys who ride metric bikes, right? Right. We just don't. We most of our friends have you know Harley's or you know now an Indian. But um, all of my buddies who are like the metric loyals, mm -hmm. the first thing they talk about is turn signal. To us, it's not a big deal because we, we we love our turn signals on either side. But the first thing they talk about is. Why do you have a turn signal on the right side of the bike? Well, because it's the right turn signal, I always tell them. 
but that is, I mean, to them, that's a legitimate complaint. Like to us, this is, this is not what we would really want. So mm -mm. that would throw me off. It'd take me forever to get used to that. Yeah. I'd probably just quit using turns right now. <laughs> Do you use them now when you ride by yourself? Sometimes. Sometimes. Occasionally. <laughs> Maybe. Depends. So, huge, huge change. Um, here you're looking at the other side with the trash control button there down bottom. And because you have the Bluetooth connectivity, they've given you a pod to control, you know, your music Volume. and your Bluetooth and fast forward and songs on your... Uh... Yeah, I mean... That's a big thing. That's that a big, a big deal. deal mm -hmm. for a sportster. So... So even if you had like, you know, a handlebar mount for your phone on this and you had your phone up top, you know, to be able to not have to mess with your phone and keep your hand on the grip and just be able to control yeah. it, you know, I think that's, uh, that's a cool thing. Yeah, that's a nice, a nice addition. Sure. Right. I mean, something that us bagger folks take for granted. You yeah. Know, all that control. Um, so here, looking at the side of the bike. Profile. I mean, the engine looks beefy. They made it look full. It does. It looks cool, man. It looks you cool. Know. Only I don't necessarily love the look of or the, or the pipes. They yeah, just look really big and bulky. Um, but the motor does look really nice. So yeah, and the pipes they do look big. It's a Harley calls it a two into one into two. Even mm -hmm. though the heat shield looks like it's kind of just a, a separate two pipes. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm neither here nor the exhaust. I don't think they were very inventive on the exhaust. I think this exhaust looks a lot like the old VMAX exhaust. So with the Yamaha VMAX, mm. and uh, you know, neither here nor there on it. So, but I like the fact that they did do a mid exhaust. I don't know. Maybe they didn't have a choice in that. Maybe that's just how the design flew. Mm -hmm. But to get that that flat tracker kind of feel into the bike. They just didn't, again, they built an exhaust for this bike instead of just bolting on whatever. Something they already had. Right? Yeah. Which is what Harley's done a lot of. I yeah. mean, bars, mirrors. They just pull something out of the, they, the back shed. They recycle parts, you yeah. know. I mean, going back to, look at the V-Rod when the V-Rod came out. The V-Rod has the same rear fender on it that the Deuce had. Same fender. So they discontinued one model, brought one back. Same fender. So they will recycle some parts. Maybe everybody loved that fender. <laughs> it's a cool fender. I can't even flat. picture it. It was like kind of flat. I'll put, a, I'll put a picture of it here, but it's kind of like flat on the bottom with a, with a curl on top. Okay. Kind of similar to, I think, maybe like a breakout or a slim fender. Breakout. So and again, I, like I like the uh, you like that the, the artwork on the on the black tank. Mm -hmm. I like it. I think it really looks good on the black tank. And again, they went for that like old school, you know, early Harley flat track kind of racer feel. Mm -hmm. I like that they did that. You know, they did that with the exhaust. Yeah. They did it with the paint. It seems like that was definitely so, the intent. Almost like you know, they're actually working with a theme for the bike. Right. Definitely. Yeah, man. Yeah, th th this rear fender. I mean, I I get it. Like, they have to work with something. Yeah. Like, I get it. Um, I I I, I got to tell you, probably everybody who's buying a bike, like that's got to be the first thing to go. Yeah. I can't imagine you're you're holding on to that. You know, legally, entirely too long. What do you have to have there? You know. So legally, legally, you need. Turn signals, and you need. Uh, do you have? Do you need them legally? I thought it was the old story of if you have them, they have to work. But if you, it's not on the bike, if you don't have them, you're using hand signals. Hand signals, but oof. I use hand signals a lot anyway. I don't know if I'm, by yourself. Sometimes I do. Never. Especially, you know what I do the most it, is when I'm making a right turn and I got traffic behind me. Then I'll put my blinker on. I start throwing my arm out. But what are the odds, like, nowadays that anybody behind you has a clue what you're doing? Nah, you still got to watch them. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. I'm not even wasting my time with hand signals because the only people that know them are the people in my group <laughs> riding with me. People, people in cars don't have a clue. <laughs> Which, when you're riding with, with Bert, this is, this is not right turn. Nope. No. What, what's right turn when you're riding with Bert? 
<laughs> and then I'm going to have to do this because George's in the back. That's fantastic. You <laughs> get a little flex. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, I mean, that's... This is boring. Uh, yeah, at least they, they, did a, they did a mount. You got a little plate. I mean, again, I think, you know, this is probably just as much a European thing as it is anything. You know, they are, you know, the plate laws, everything are, are yeah. very... Uh, no, nah, I mean, I understand why they did it. Very cool here. Looks cool. Looks cool from the back. I think I think the bike Sleek. looks looks really cool from the back, especially as like that plate holder gets out of view, right, yeah. with this camera angle. So you can see down below um, another cool thing about this bike: adjustable suspension. Yep. So something that you know, mono shock. Again, they're calling it a Sportster. Old Sportsters, I mean, have, you know, the same crappy Harley suspension that they've had for, you know, 30 years. That, that suspension hasn't changed. So here you've got an adjustable monoshock. You know, very cool that they did that. They didn't have to make that thing adjustable. They could have just slapped a monoshock in there and called it. No, I mean, you can see the effort. Yeah. In, in some change and improvements. So looking at, the, looking at the front of the bike... I don't like this change. You don't mind it. Yeah, I, I think it looks better than what... Yeah, yeah, I think it looks better. You think it looks cleaner? Yeah. Less, it looks less... Uh, I don't know what the word is. Just goofy looking. So what we're talking about, which stands out to me, is on a Harley Sportster, you know, again, they took parts. The Sportsters and the soft tails all had the same turn signals. You know, up on the bar... The one side mounted like with the mirror. Mm -hmm. It's how they have been. It's how they've been for, you know, again, you know, who knows, probably 20 years. Um, here they've obviously, we said all LED, but they've given it a fork mounted turn signal. Yeah. Um, I like it. I like it. I so, on the bars. Again, again, a little bit of a metric influence though, because a lot of your metric bikes, that's where they are, you know, and you can always, yeah, it's not, I'm not necessarily a fan. I think uh, they could have been a little closer. I think it might have looked a little nicer if they, they were a little closer. They do stick out. like They seem like they stick mm -hmm. out a little further than they need, they need to. Yeah, but, but um, that might be yeah. a DOT thing. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I have no idea. So. Yeah, they do. They do stick out a little bit. look like uh, the eyeballs off the side of the head. But I do like I do like them on the forks, though. But. So that's just that's just little handlebars and uh, a lot of crap on there. Like, well, which is why I think thing to add on to there. Which is why I think these are got moved down. I don't know if it was necessarily a styling thing or if it was a, a necessity thing. Like we have to now move this, but you know, not a round headlight, square no. headlight. No, it's oval. You know, yeah, well, yeah, kind of oval. That street bob kind of yeah. uh, a fat bob rather kind of look to it. Yep. Um, I don't mind it. I think it looks good on the bike. No, the light's fine. You know, I'm on the light. It's cool. So, and this is this is the thing. I mean, you know, now that you got a liquid cooled engine, you got to have a radiator. And yep. I think they did a good job with this because what I hate about some liquid cooled bikes is you see this big old big radiator yeah. just sitting there, like in the front. And th this is compact. It's got you know. It's got to fit into the bike. It's got a curve to it. It's like designed for the bike. Um, well, I, when we were there in person, I didn't even necessarily it didn't jump out of me. I didn't even notice it. Right, so, right. I mean, that's a good thing. Right. As with most, like when you see like a Kawasaki or some of those Suzuki models, yeah. where it's like it's they're just all radiant in the front, and uh, it just drives me kind of nuts. So, this is again like this is a huge change for Harley going forward. Typically Harley frame and then the rear frame set, you know, is, you know, attached like we have a swing arm on the, uh, on our, on the baggers, on the tour bikes. Um, but the engine is mounted to the frame. Yep. You know, yep. here the engine is the frame. So we're looking yep. at the, that rear swing arm is bolted into the back of the engine and the front set of the bike, the front end of the bike is obviously bolted to the front end of the engine. And it's kind of dark in there, but you can see like where the monoshock sits. It's uh, 
not new technology. Sports bikes have been doing this for for years. You know, this is not like something Harley invented, obviously, but it does um, shaves a ton of weight. You got a lot less. Does it? Yeah, you got a lot less metal. True. Think about it. You've just eliminated, you know, I don't know if you've eliminated twenty pounds on a bike like this. Maybe not that. Maybe maybe it's somewhere to ten to twenty pounds. But I mean, it's a lot of tubing that they eliminated. Hmm. So very cool. Pan America. Cool. Pan America same way. Right. The Revo engine is obviously designed for this. Yeah. So, you know, I guess the question comes when it's time to put this bike into a soft tail or into a touring bike. How's that gonna work? How's that gonna look? You know what I mean? It's uh, huh? Because this is obviously their platform. Like they they need to go liquid cooled at some point. They need to go liquid cooled. You know. And we talked about this a little bit. The display. It says like I don't know. I think the description is very underwhelming. Four inch display. But when I saw it in person, it looks again. It, it just looked bigger than four inches. Like I didn't think it was too small. You know. Um, but again, you're to a digital display, so you can have your speedometer. You can put they have it. You can put your tachometer up here. I mean, to have a tack on a Sportster, mm -hmm. you know, that was your, you know, probably hundred and whatever dollar replacement for your speedo to combine the tack into it. You know, Harley's obviously committed to the bike. They've started making, you know, a line of parts for yeah. it. They didn't have too too much. But the contrast stuff, look, you know, I think it looks cool. You like contrast stuff. You've got I a lot of contrast cool. cut on your bike, you know. So yeah, I like it personally. Yeah, you know, to look, an extent, looks pretty neat. They've got. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the story with those mirrors are. If those mirrors are mirrors to go like up top, like in in inboard further, and get rid of the bar ends because they kind of. I don't. Don't look like they'd be bar end, right? They look like they'd be up by like the. Uh, they, they don't look bar end. They they look like they'd be up by the module somewhere. Yeah. You know, which would make you happy, because you're not a fan of the bar end. All right, locking gas cap, something. It's cool. Not Harley has, right? I mean. No. You seen a? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. And it would be real easy, like on touring bikes right now, for Harley to put a locking gas cap because you got to press that button to get the thing yeah. anyway. It's just not make like, that the lock, right? Right, you just make that the lock, I would think. Gosh. So and you know, set up for some crash bars. Yeah, some crash bars. <laughs> a passenger pillion, you know, a little backrest, a little bag, a windshield. Windshield looks pretty good, I think. Actually, yeah, it does. It doesn't look bad at all. Actually. You know, I mean, I think the windshield looks kind of nice, quite frankly. I just can't imagine that that passenger pillion being comfortable. Not only that, just like where that where that muffler's coming right up, it's going to be like yeah. under your cheek. Going to be like right out. Uh, yeah. If you ain't a tiny little thing, holy cow, your your butt's going to be resting on that. I think thing. I think that cat is going to be close to that passenger. Like that thing is going to be right underneath their leg because I know the Heck cat. Yeah. The cat on. On the road glide bothers both me and it bothers Stacy. Like the bottom of her foot on those boards gets really hot. Yeah, you I know. Don't. So it's interesting to uh, see see if people have anything to say. This. But again, like a little backrest. Like they've designed parts for this bike that are for this bike. Yeah. You know, this isn't. Uh, you know, it's not the same old Sportster backrest that is going on to the same old. You know hardware mounts and everything so kind of cool it's cool so the other thing is sometimes when you see a new bike come out i mean especially like this indian is kind of having this problem a little bit right it's their aftermarket parts are growing but here harley's coming out with a brand new platform so what is what's the aftermarket community how long is it going to take them to get on board you know, and I think we're starting to see that. And that's a sign that I think it's going to be around for a while. You know, TC Brothers is um, a company that hasn't made a lot of Harley stuff. A lot of, a lot of sport stuff, a lot of, a lot of sport bike type stuff. And they've got a nice fender eliminator, built-in brake light, built-in turn signals on it. Bike cleans up, gets rid of that whole bulky back. Yeah. This this would be the first thing that would be gone. 
Definitely. Gone, right? Get rid of that. You know, I don't know that I'd make it a month with the, with, with the big, uh, no. with, with the big rear end. Yeah, I'd probably order this the same day I bought the bike. Yeah. So, and they make an exhaust. Which is, looks pretty cool. I think it looks sporty as anything, man. Yeah. Two in the one. And it's got that flat tracker kind of style to it. Yep. Um, not cheap, but you know what? Not crazy. It's a full exhaust system. Yeah, I don't think it's outrageous. You know? So, I don't think it's nuts at all. And I found this little picture. This is the bike with a black exhaust with the fender eliminator See, on it. looks so much better. Wow, it looks good. Top. looks a lot better. I like that. It looks good. It looks really good. I mean, I dig that. And it's got, and this has the uh, the rear fender crap eliminated too, right? So yep. this is the whole thing cleaned up. I mean, it really does look a lot better like that. Two simple changes to the bike. Yeah. You know, an exhaust, you know, getting rid of that cat. So maybe that passenger will, you know, I still think the exhaust can be close to your passenger's leg. Yeah. Obviously. Um, but uh, getting rid of that and getting rid of that rear fender just makes the bike you know, it looks sleek. And oddly enough, like the fender um, license plate holder sits, even though it sits out behind the bike, I feel like the bike looks longer without it. You know, like that. I can see that. You know, how that back tire is kind of stretched out mm -hmm. and sticking out way behind the bike. I, I feel like it looks a little bit longer without Speaking it. The tires, man. How about the size of your yeah. tires? <laughs> Yo, the sidewalls on those babies. The sidewalls. <laughs> it's like you're ready to roll on the beach, man. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm telling it's you. It's interesting. It's cool, though. Overall, man, it's 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 cool. It's a cool sports there. I mean, sports just don't usually get much attention from me, but um, I like this look right here with your show with the uh, yeah the aftermarket stuff. This I think, and with all that power and the way that bike looks, I mean, I think I think that'd be a nice bike. I mean, not for nothing, you know. People, obviously, the Harley loyalists are are going to be. Well, they're getting away from air cooled, and Harley's always been air cooled, and this and that. And you have, they have to, they have to. You can't knock them for getting away from air cooled, and getting away from the stuff that is not for nothing, kind of antiquated, and then not, and then also knock them for not keeping up with companies like Indian. Right, right, right. You know, so it's well, that's, uh, what, that's what folks like to do. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Sportster, people think like Sportster, Scout kind of comparison, and this bike, obviously, you know, a Scout is, you know, just under 12 grand, which is where the sport regular Sportsters are priced. This is more in competition with like Indians FTR, you know, horsepower right. numbers, torque mountain uh, numbers, almost the same, and if you're looking at the FTR carbon, the pricing is basically, you know, that's a seventeen thousand dollar bike. This sitting at most dealers is a seventeen thousand dollar bike. Um, I, I, I think it's a cool thing Harley did. I mean, my opinion is uh, they should keep doing stuff like this. Yeah. You know. Well, they got to keep advancing, right? Yeah. And pushing the envelope a little bit, and I think they did on this one. So it's very, uh, you know, a lot went into this design. I know they scrapped the Bronx. Everybody was excited about the Bronx. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure you necessarily need a Bronx with this in the lineup. I mean, I get the, the, granted the Bronx was a street fighter. This isn't really a street fighter. How many people are buying street fighters? I mean, I, I don't know. Got me. You know, so. You know, so listen. Let us know your opinions on not only the Sportster, but the direction at, you know, which Harley seems to be going. What you guys think? I know, I know. There's be a lot of haters out there. People are, you know, gonna dig their heels in for the water cool, yeah. you know, situation until the end, you know. But a lot of stuff on this bike, a lot of technology onto this bike. When I first saw the price, it, I was like, get out of here. But after you see what's included in this bike, I think compared to the rest of Harley's lineup, I think that price is, you know, in line. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of new technology on it that, or at least new for a sportster, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. All right. So listen, more motorcycle content and obviously our beer content, rallies. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button and ring that bell. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one.